This is a rematch I've been waiting for. Oh, wow. I've always dreamt of being in the band. At home, I used to watch MTV and sing along like I was a rock star. I can sing. Well, 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 welcome everyone to our interview with the Pottery, Pottery Show. We have here my, my good guest and star of California Dreams and Suki herself from Avatar Last Airbender. Yes, leader of the Kyoshi Warriors herself, Jenny Kwan. What's up, Jenny? Hi, Ryan. How are you? Thanks for having me today. Doing good, doing good, Ate. Mabuhai. <laughs> Yes, Yes, of course. Yes, guys, I am wearing a barong to honor our culture, and it's also API it. Heritage Month, so Love it. represent. Yeah, yes. represent. That's right. Again, thank you, Jane, for being our special guest, and thank you so much. I'm a huge fan of your work, by the way. So. Oh, well, thank you for having me today. Yes. There you go. Oh, let me put you to the left to get some more start. There you go. <laughs> yes. And let me put you centered. There you go. Wow. <laughs> yes. All right, now let's start the interview off, Jenny. Um, oh. Can you tell us how did you get started with acting, or better yet, what made you interested in joining the entertainment field or industry? That it, you know, I actually, it literally was the situation where I fell into show business. I was 11 years old, and when I was a kid, I was in a performing troupe called Kids of the Century. And we used to perform live performances around Southern California. And then we traveled to New York to celebrate the commemoration of the Statue of Liberty. And when I was coming home, I literally was discovered by an agent on the plane coming home to LA. And I, the, the funny story about that is I literally was a kid, kid. You know, I mean, you, I was sleeping on the plane my sister was chaperoning me. She had woken me up. I literally had drool on my shoulder from sleeping, <laughs> just like out on the flight. And she's like, there's an agent on the plane, Jennifer. Go meet the agent. And I was like, what? <laughs> and it looked like a scene from the movies. I walked down the aisle forward to, toward the forward, toward, can I talk? Toward the forward of the plane. I think that's grammatically correct. And I just see all my friends, they were, it's like they were juggling, they were doing cartwheels, they were singing, they were dancing, and here I come, and I'm just half awake, and I start talking to the agent, and she just asked me a couple questions, and I was like shrugging my shoulders, she's like, oh, when we get home, do you want to be an actor? When we get home, if you go to um, my office and meet with me, will, will you start acting? Shrugging my shoulders. If you go to an acting class and then come to my office, would you want to try acting? And I thought about it. And the thing that really interested me was going to the acting class. I was like, okay. And then I turned around and I went back to my seat. So literally it was like I was discovered on that plane. And hey. I, yeah, it's crazy. Stars align, stars align. <laughs> Well, I think it goes way before that because my mom told me that when she was pregnant with me, she said, God, please make my daughter a nun or an actress. And I thought, there's no way I'm becoming a nun. And then she said, God, please make my daughter an actress. Here, So I blame it on my mother. Here so, I am. It's still. a predestination, predestination. It actually worked. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yes. Of course, especially if you guys are an Asian American community, you go, we, we don't, you guys would understand. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes. Um, now, of course, Jenny, like I mentioned earlier, you were part of a hit sitcom. Actually, I would say even a underrated sitcom in the nineties called California Dreams. Yes. Now, uh, can you tell us what was the audition process for that hit sitcom in the nineties? Yes. So basically. Back in the day before we would send our auditions, now what's called self-taping, we tape everything at home for, for the most part. Um, we, I'm gonna take off my earring here, Ryan, just in case it is interfering <laughs> with sound. Technical, a technical pause, everybody. Um, 
So back in the day when you would go to in live sessions in the casting offices or to the studio, um, we would go in person. And um, so basically the audition process for Dreams was you went to the initial audition and then you would go to what's called a callback. Now in this case, I had about nine auditions. So mm -hmm. half of them were for the acting because what would happen is you would go Again, you'd go to the initial call, then you'd go to the call back, and if they had notes, they would call you back again, and then the ultimate final destination, if you will say, um, you go to what's called network, where the all the executives and all the network representatives decide as a whole if they want to cast you or not, along with the producers of the show. And the reason why there were nine was because half of them were for acting, and then the other half were in the studio to make sure you know the initial actors could sing and carry the tune so it was a pretty rigorous it was a pretty rigorous um audition process now a lot of people may not know that the final three that went down to network for the part of tiffany smith were myself my best friend kelly packard who actually got the role and another dear friend of mine named ali navarro who is also a performer and um so it's the three of us we're all different, and um, I had actually, I didn't get the part, and then I actually went on tour with the musical Miss Saigon, and oh, literally cool. during my run, Peter Engel, who is the EP of the show, called me and was like, Jenny, do you want to come home and do a TV show? And I was like, okay, hung up on him, and my manager was like, we have to call him back, you know? I mean, just these strange occurrences that they just didn't seem real at the time. So I think I was just in shock. Wait, wait, so you're Miss Saigon? I did, yeah. I, I played the lead uh -huh. in Miss Saigon. I played the title role of Kim in the first national Broadway tour of Saigon. I So, so when, when things started becoming popular for musical theater um, and national tours started heading out, uh, I was the first Kim who started the, the national tours. So you're in the same legacy as Leia Salonga. Oh yeah, I I, I was one of the I, I I she was the original and I was the Kim who started the first national tour. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. Historic, historic. I like, I like yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, now going forward, uh, of course, in California Dreams, like we saw the trail a little intro earlier, you had an amazing voice. I mean, um, of course, I wasn't born yet when California Dreams came out, but I did oh, watch. <laughs> But I did watch some episodes. Okay. I did watch some episodes. Okay. Um, but again, I love the show because, like, it kind of reminds me of, like, current musicals or current, oh, okay. like, musics, like, you know, like, High School Musical, Glee. And the fact that your show had, like, I think more than 40 original songs was amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, we yes. were, like, the pioneers of all that. We had a record deal mm -hmm. with a record company called MCA. It was the original Synergy back in the day. Um, and all those songs were written by Steve Tyrell, who is, he's now pretty well known as a jazz performer and Barry mm -hmm. Copping, who um, did some voices for the show too. And Barry's amazing. He was there during that whole process and just an amazing singer songwriter and wrote most of the songs with Steve Tyrell. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, now, my next question is, like, what was your experience working on California Dreams and with, with your amazing cast? <laughs> and also playing Samantha Wu. <laughs> I mean, it was a dream come true. Literally, I really didn't consider it going to work because we, I say this all the time, but we were just going and having so much fun. Yes, it was work. Yes, we had to block scenes. Yes, we had to memorize our lines. And we were hired to do that, but it literally was like going to camp for me, hanging out with my friends. And we we pushed the envelope a little bit as far as our attention span, but I think that goes to show just how much we really adored each other and really actually loved spending time together. So, there, we just had so many fun memories and we just did actually a, a virtual con and hmm. reliving those memories, it, it, it's like it's still fresh because some of my classmates haven't changed. <laughs> it's like, 
we've all grown and some of us are still the same, but we've grown too. So um, it, it, that's, it's just a bond that I can't replace. And I get a little bit emotional thinking about it because to this day, you know, some of my best friends are from the show. Mm, yes. California yeah. Dreams movie reunion, guys. Oh, yeah, in. totally. Make it happen. It's been amazing to just, you know, I mean, Kelly's four kids, I've, I've known before since they were born, you know, her, her two eldest kids and her lived at my house while I was here. And Michael just had a baby and it's just amazing. And William has two beautiful, you know, young grown boys, you know, and it, it's just, and I keep in touch with Jay. He's in Australia, but it, 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 I'm very, very lucky that that experience was a positive one and that we, again, we still enjoy each other's company, which is not always the case with cast members. Mm, exactly. <laughs> now, for my next question is, of course, mm -hmm. you are part of an iconic franchise, animated franchise, say, I can see it behind your back, <laughs> the nice little poster. Oh, oh I don't, yeah, oh. yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Sure. What was the audition process for Suki in the last Airbender series? Well, Avatar, last Airbender series. Yes. Oh, that's a, that. That's subliminal. That's subliminal, right? Um, you know that was also similar. Uh, we used to go to our agent's office and lay down a voiceover track for the part. Right. It, same thing on camera or for this specific show for VO. I got the sides, which means it's in uh, um, just a small part of the script. And in this case, it was for a new character, a young warrior named Suki. So basically, I went in, I did the sides, my agent sent it off to Nickelodeon. Next thing you know, I'm at a callback in the Nickelodeon studios. And if anybody knows anything about it or ha has taken a tour or has auditioned there, it's basically... <laughs> It, it, it's like an explosion of color in the lobby. What you imagine Nickelodeon to be, it is what it is, and just vibrant and 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 lovely and colorful and energy. And um, you know, there were so many people there that day. Some auditioning for Suki and some auditioning for different parts like Zuko or Azula. Um, you know, and at the time I didn't know, but I. I I think I want to say I remember seeing Dante there in the <laughs> in the waiting room. I think I want to say because we knew each other, but we Dante's a little younger than me, but but we knew each other, but we didn't know each other at the time. So, um, but I remember just it was so busy that day at the, at the callback, and and um, I remember going into the booth, and the creators were there, and some of the MV stunts. Nickelodeon execs, you know, I'm, I'm getting them all this stuff. But, but yeah, then next thing you know, I'm, I'm back at Nickelodeon recording this scene for, you know, this young warrior without really having seen any detail to her character. So it was basically we were creating her as I spoke and as the director and the creators were like, okay, we want to go in this direction and let's try this and... Yeah, it was quite the experience. Mm. Um, to follow up with that, now mm -hmm. Suki's one of the strongest <laughs> female non-benders on a show. Right. Why do you think she and the other Kyoshi warriors are so iconic? I would say Suki and the Kyoshi warriors are so iconic because of basically what they stand for, what Suki stands for. You know, she is someone who is of service um, and wants to really put out her best her best in the world to serve the better of the community um and is is pretty you know selfless when she goes about doing that and, and why she goes about the reason you know i i consider her to be very pure in her intention and i think people really resonate with that you know when 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 people reach out to me and all sorts of people, all sorts of walks of life from around the globe, actually, you know, that, that actually get avatars or streaming service or what have you, you know, it, it, it's 
similar reactions, similar things that people say why they want Suki. Um, and, you know, when I do my cameos, it's interesting during the pandemic, sometimes people were really, really down. And a couple times people said, you know, just watching Avatar, watching the episodes really helped me get through my depression or, you know, I couldn't get out of bed for three months and now look like I'm, I'm getting married, Jenny, and I'm, I'm so much better, you know, and I mean, it really touches me when people really feel affected by the show and by her character and, and what she stands for. And yeah, I, I want to be more like Suki. You know, I say that all the time. You know, I, I really appreciate everything she has brought to my life and what the show has brought to my life. Yeah, like the show came out, I think 2006. I was literally 11 years old when the show came out. Again, when I saw her character, I just fell in love with her, especially in the end. I was trying to ship her with Zoot with, uh, with Soka, and yes, it happened. So <laughs> thank you. But yes, I do love um, Suki and the Kyoshi Wars. Like, they were badasses. And keep in mind, because I love Mulan, I love strong female characters. Yeah, I was one of the, I went down to the final three for Mulan. It, it's incredible, you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, for the singing voice, actually um i still have the sheet music actually for that oh my god but, yeah but but what i will say about suki also and i don't know if anybody has read the the comic um that dark that dark yes. put out. suki not only she is this lovely young person and is so strong but if you read the comic she actually goes you know she really has to find herself when she is by herself at Boiling Rock. And she does have some interesting moments that she really, really has to soul search. And then you see episodes like Ember Island. Ember Island players mm -hmm. are just a regular teenager also and is light and is fun and is she jokes around and just wants to have a good time with her friends and her boyfriend. So I really just love her character and the depth of who she is. But overall, ethically and morally what she stands for is what i think people gravitate towards yes um now talking about something again mm -hmm. um they just recently announced the cast for netflix live action avatar right um what three pieces of advice would you give your live action counterpart or variant i would say variant because you know uh, it's hot right now maria zhang to bring the character to life and for People who would want to know who her live action counterpart is, it's actually here. Let me give you a sec. I'll bring it out. Right. Yes. So this is Maria Zhang. She'll play live action Suki. So going back to the question of what three oh. piece of advice would you like to give Maria? Well, first of all, I think she is so fitting for the part. She looks like Suki and that's why she's cast. What I would say is just have integrity with Suki. Because Suki, like I said, to me, she has pure intentions um, and she's real. And so I would say have integrity and um, appreciate what she, she's going to bring to you because Suki, is, she's magical, you know. She's an earthbender and she's real, but she's also really magical. If you're able to bring that spirit of realness and, and purity and integrity to her, then you will have done your job and it she will just actually live through you like all you have to do is be the vessel for her really um and let her do her thing you know <laughs> yes but yeah. but i think if you if you are just honest and genuine you know that would be the piece of advice i would say is just be honest and genuine and real and let her do her thing, because she'll just do it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm excited for it, too. And again, guys, this is what uh, Maria Zhang looks like. You guys are new live action super for Netflix. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um. Now, of course, you were are recently in a reality show about cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to ask you this. Um. Uh, do you have any behind the scenes stories that you could tell while being a contestant in Worst Cook in America Celebrity Edition? Mm -hmm. That you could tell. What 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 is it? I'm sorry, Ryan. Oh, what? like um, do you have any like behind the scenes stories or like, edition process or how did you oh, get into the show? Well, sure, sure, and <clears throat> I I have some things to say about that. <laughs> Food Network had reached out to my agents 
<clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me, I literally thought when my agents called me, they said, Jenny, um, uh, a show on Food Network is interested in having you be on their show. And all of a sudden my heart's like, <gasps> because the one thing I am truly insecure about is cooking. That is, I mean, even as I speak about it, I said, well, what show is it? They said, worst cooks in America. So I and I said, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like I literally almost had a meltdown. And I was like, well, how serious are they? They said, I think they're pretty serious. So I had an interview with them and they asked me so many questions about my cooking history. If I had cooking history, if I didn't have cooking, so many, the process of, of what I knew and what I didn't know, which was more the case. Um, so yeah, they, I think they pretty much knew who they wanted. Um, and even talking about it, oh my gosh, my stomach still curled. And uh, I just watched last night's episode and I am still a mess from that. Um, the process, it's interesting. People will say, was that fake? Are you guys faking it? We are not faking anything. I mean, the editing might be great, you know, because it still is a show. But I will say, honestly, all of us, as I have it exhale, all of us went in there working our tails off and really caring about the process and really wanting to do well um, with the capabilities that we have, you know, and what a lot of people don't know is that we were working so many hours, 14 to 19 hour days, and we were in the studio at five and six in the morning. We wouldn't leave until like nine or 10 at night. Um, so if you can imagine someone like me, who's already insecure to cook in front of anybody, even my friends, because most of my friends are really good cooks, which I'm like, oh, I just wanted to make them proud, you know, but um, you're working on little sleep. You literally are very disoriented in this place where you're cooking. You're timed mm -hmm. and you're making things maybe that most people did. I didn't, for example, Kelly, my best friend, she texted me today. She's like, please tell me you were kidding that you didn't know how to make a waffle. I'm like, nope. I, nope. That was all real. And I won't give anything away in case some people want to watch it and um, they can stream it. But I mean, even talking about it now, I'm shaking because I haven't seen any of the episodes. I'm, I'm seeing them as they are aired. They would not give it to us. And um, just because they, you know, of course, they, they wanted to be the element of surprise, which we're surprised. Trust me. Um, so the whole process was real. <laughs> if people want to know again of course it's a reality show they're going to edit the, the the fun parts together we had a blast but it was work it was work it wasn't like i was on like another reality show where i'm sipping a drink on the beach you know like waiting for my match oh no we were working constantly those 14 to 19 hour days so it was it was it was quite the adventure I mean, I did watch some epi your like, the episodes. Like, you actually didn't didn't do that bad for some. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I'm actually yeah. curious now. Like, I want to actually now I want to try the dishes you made. And so I remade one of them, and I I still actually have to edit it together. But um, just because I was like, oh man, I could have done that better. But again, you know, you are being timed. There's three cameras on you while you're doing it, and I'm I mean. I was watching, again, I don't want to give it away, but I was watching last night's episode, the most recent episode, and uh, something they didn't catch was I had made the measurements incorrect three times. Like, and I had to keep doing it over and over, and I was like, oh my God, and you're looking at the clock, and you're, you're like, it's not, you don't have enough time. Like, it, it's just so much, you know, because you're exhausted already, you know, running on fumes from just like trying to, process everything you're learning because I did learn a lot. We did have real tutorials. You can see it online like when they do the the demonstrations of what we're going to make. We're only allowed to have our notebooks, but we are only allowed to have our notebooks on the set. 
So you're trying to remember everything that you're taught and then like in the order, but there's so much because you're not just making one thing. Sometimes you're making three things for your, your entree. Oh, oh my gosh. And so like, even as I think about it, it's like, oh, my heart beats because in your normal life, there's not time to just take your time to go back and forth and read your recipe with directions. But you're writing it down furiously, like hoping that you're going to remember it in the exact order because you're going to be judged on it, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and I'm already nervous about people judging what I took anyway. Yes. Now, so it's, a perfect, yes. it's a perfect storm. So, yes, yes people, I, we were not faking it. <laughs> Um, to add a little follow-up to this, um, of course, you are Filipino. Uh, mm-hmm. Which Filipino dish would you l- that you could cook, or you think you could cook, that you would love, that you could like, like serve us? Oh, Go God. to. Well, I guess I'd have to say adobo. That's the Heck simple. Yeah. That's, I mean, but although I was challenged, you know, a friend of mine was like, you know, her <laughs> friend knows how to make it too, and she's like, I think... Nikki made it better. I think he knows how to make it better. I'm like, what are you talking about? You haven't even tasted. You don't even know if I can make it or not, you know? So, um, but uh, yeah, I still buy my food, you know? <laughs> uh, same here, same here. Uh, no judge. <laughs> um, now, of course, uh, next question is for you. Um, oh. Of course, it is API API here, um, Asian American yeah. Pacific Islander Month. Um, mm-hmm. Can you tell us about the impact of being a role model to the API community and being an inspiration for any Asian American who wants to be part of this entertainment industry? You know, it's interesting. When I was actually doing Dreams, I originally when it came out, I did not know the impact of, mm-hmm. you know, today we're a lot more educated and informed, Mm -hmm. like when people say, you know, seeing you on TV is reflecting back to me that people in the entertainment business can look like me, right? And so when I started getting actual fan mail that people wrote and saying that, I was much younger and I was like, well, what do they mean by that? And I remember a couple of years ago, a friend of mine telling me, he said, do you know that you were the first Asian American woman who was a series regular on a TV show. I was like, what? No, that's not true. That's not true. He's like, no, I think so. He said, you know, you can look it up. I think you were the first series regular Asian American woman. I said, I don't know about that. Like, I guess we'll have to Google it. But as I think back, I'm trying to remember even through the seventies, even through the eighties, if there was an Asian American series regular lead on a TV show. Um, so he may be right. Um, movies, that may be a different story, but a series regular on a, a TV show, that's that's what I'm, I'm curious about. Um, I haven't really looked to, to verify that or not. But now I really, really feel the impact because of social media mm-hmm. and how fast people can respond. And it really, I feel very moved by that. And I feel like, Wow, you know, it, I, I get a little bit emotional. I've worked really hard in my career um, to get to that point where people can even notice that. And that that is a big honor. You know, um, there's a lot of people who are coming in in the industry now. And, you know, back in the day, I, I we worked really hard. And if people don't know, my maiden name was Fernando. In the 80s, a Fernando didn't look like this, right? A Fernando, di- a Fernando you would think was more Latin or Hispanic, mm-hmm. but Filipinos have a range of different um, sounding names from, it sounds Italian, it sounds Hispanic, it sounds more um, Taiwanese, more Chinese, or traditionally Filipino, but that is the range and people didn't know that, you know, in the 80s. And so, when I started out, my agent went through a book and was like, oh, there's enough leaves, there's enough this Quan. Okay, Jenny Quan. I was like, okay. You know, and luckily my parents did not take offense and they were very supportive and, you know, to, to get on the map and to, again, be noticed for the work that I do and 
who I represent. And for California Dreams, for example, I didn't go in as an Asian character originally. I went in as the California girl, because guess what? I am that character. I am that person. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I go to the beach every weekend. I try and go whenever I can. That is who I am, regardless if I'm blonde, if I'm, you know, like if I have black hair, if I'm, no, that's who I am. And of course, that comes in all different shades and varieties, especially here on the West Coast. So to be able to be, I don't want to say a leader, but to be able to have a stake in that and say, I'm, I hope I'm paving the way and I hope I've made a difference, not only for Asian people, but for any person who who wants to be in the entertainment industry and finds it challenging, you know? And today it's different because there's a lot more platforms so people have mm -hmm. more opportunities. It's different. There's more opportunities, so it makes it more flooded, but there is more opportunity for people to have a chance. You just have to be willing to take it and, 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 and stick it out. So yeah. it's the fact that, uh, you started really early to the point where like, uh, Asian Americans were not usually featured in TV at all. Like, yeah. like, yeah, that, that's a big, that was a huge deal to us. Um, to, I mean, of course I was, I wasn't born yet, but of course to like, let's say my cousins, my mom, cause the thing is, my cousin, she watched California Dreams, and when she found uh -huh. out I was interviewing you, she's like, "Oh my God, Samantha!" Oh, so she actually does remember. Oh, yes. yeah. And so you know, it's funny because I will, you know, right now I'm going to cons because I've been so fortunate to be a part of the Avatar universe. But people do come up to me if it's the parents sometimes, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, this is my show. They want to come for Avatar, but this is my show." And I was like, "I'm so appreciative," you know, because. That's what got me on the map for people to know that, you know, here's a whole world of, of Asian, the Asian community that wants to be represented. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so Jenny, there is some fan questions for you sure. and yeah, so <laughs> these are actually amazing and funny. Cool. Are you ready for them? Cool. Ready. So first we do a greeting. Uh, my good friend Jen says, love you, Ate. She's still here. Aw, <laughs> hey, Genesis, yes. hey. <laughs> and then Cody from Cody's House of Geeks says, hey, Jenny, it's Cody. I got a question. Since California Dreams is a 90s show, what was your favorite 90s pastime, favorite food, drinks, movie, and our music? Oh, a good one. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay, so um, the, the, the 90s question about my favorite pastime, favorite food that's so funny funny i have a i'm i love food so that's a hard question for me however food i would say churros because <laughs> i can't eat them as much now um music hands down 90s hip-hop r&b let's go movies. that is the ultimate 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 movies um clueless i love clueless. oh nice of course um and it's funny one of my one of my castmates on um on the reality show she played amber in Clues. it's just fun it's it, like we're just having a great time just had a great time just uh reminiscing about certain things and again like for example that group of people who come from that old school mentality everybody really really worked so hard for for a while you know, and it's just fun to kind of be in that same mentality, and you know, here we all, here we all are, are here we all are still. <laughs> yes, uh, Will Santana films. Who will yeah. win the fight between Suki, oh, Thirteen, and Oh my gosh! Wow, that's a tough one. Um, Thirteen is Thirteen from Scissor Seven. She's pretty badass. Mayuki oh. Nise has a very, very determined, strong will these are all amazing female characters um again because i think suki has this integrity she knows herself actually i would say she knows herself the most out of those characters so i think that confidence really would carry her through but i would not challenge those three to go up against each other we would be here for days <laughs> They have strong spirits, all those three characters. Very strong. <laughs> uh, Cody's saying, Jane Kwan, next Iron Chef. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's, oh my talking. God. That, I don't know. That's a tall order. My stomach again just got <laughs> it so, Oh my gosh. Um, and then he's like, 
Oh my gosh. Okay, you you're too you're into a. Uh, okay, I know you're into that show a lot, but uh, oh, Anna Marie Silva, you're amazing on Worst Cook. You crack me up. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. Oh my gosh. And then she says, "I have a California group." Oh, cool, cool. Oh, fun. Yes. Uh, let's see what else. Um. Oh, it's like our greeting. It's the last one. Okay. Popcorn and soda pop show. Oh, had some. Okay. Hello, buddy. Show and such a guest. Hello, hello. Hello. Yes, I think that's all of them. And uh, yeah, that's that's all of them. Cool. Um, oh, Jen says, "Oh my God!" Because <laughs> the reference to worst cooks. <laughs> oh yes. Ooh yeah, and so yeah. I mean, I I'm I'm so glad people are enjoying it. We don't know. We don't know what's gonna happen. I'm still safe for this week. Um. Yeah, but things are really, really uh, heating up. Things are heating up in the kitchen. <laughs> or cooling down. No, they're heating up for real. It, 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 it's a good competition. <laughs> and um, it, it, I love it because the thing is, again, with this cast too, we're super supportive. But I must say, the blue team rules. That's all I have to say. Jody and Matthew and myself and LB, like, we're working. We, and, and Chef Jeff, you know, he's new to the show, and so he has something to prove, too. So all I know is we are working our butts off. Yes. Um, before we end the show, Jenny, um, there, is there any upcoming events or conventions that you could share to the fans? Sure. Um, let's see. So right now, as you guys know, I will just repeat it just as a shameless plug. Worst Cooks in America Celebrity Edition is still airing as we speak. Um, we're, we're, I think we just had our third episode last night, but you can also stream it on Discovery Plus. And actually, my upcoming next con that I will, I'll just say the next two cons for now, um, May 14th and 15th, I will be at Fort Smith, Arkansas. And then at the end of May, I will be in Columbus, Ohio for the Fanboy Expo convention. But if you guys need more information, I do my best to try and say where I will be. Um, if you go to my Instagram, Jenny underscore Kwan on Instagram, I, I try and list. I, I actually do have a schedule of the cons that I know of so far that I have this year, but things are kind of popping in here and out here in and out here so as they as they come in i will just post about them and hopefully i'll be able to meet everybody in their hometown it's been great nice yeah oh, we have we have two new questions we'll do sure. we'll do a speed run um sure. alex white who's your favorite avatar character that you did not voice mm. <laughs> um oh gosh it's hard it's funny i i love katara and i also i also love jet <laughs> <laughs> I like that, and I love Aqua. D. Oh. Brad Baker is phenomenal, like phenomenal as as the animal voices. But he brings Aqua to life, hands down. He's incredible. Uh, final greeting. Adam says you still look amazing. Thirty years later, as Samantha Wu. Oh, thank you. Emory. And then our final question is actually it's more like a request. Can oh God! got the. <laughs> Maraming, maraming salamat. Please don't kill me. When I've had auditions for um, Filipino characters, the first one I had to do was for MTV years ago. And my mom's like, oh my God, your accent is terrible. I was like, well, it's your fault. You didn't teach me Tagalog. And then I literally had to speak in Tagalog for this audition. And my husband's coworker, she is a saint. She translated everything into Tagalog and then she tutored me and I, it was so embarrassing. I'm like, please don't judge me. She like, she spent hours tutoring me. It's easier for me to sing in Tagalog because musically it's easier to hear for me at least. But I know that's how a lot of people, they learn English. They hear, like they watch, you know, American movies and they, they hear the songs. It's easier for me to sing in Tagalog than it is to speak actually. So, yeah, I've sung some Filipino songs and I want to learn more, but um, yeah, don't judge me on my pronunciation like my mother does. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, your Tagalog was really good back then. Good well, back then, back like 
Like yeah. two seconds ago, Maran. Yeah, like two seconds ago. Ganda yeah. ano yung tagalog mo ate eh. Sketch. <laughs> yeah, put the eh to put an accent, right? Yeah, right. right, right. Um, right. I wanted to go to the Philippines actually before the pandemic, but obviously mm-hmm. I haven't. But um, hopefully in the next couple of years, I'll be able to get to the motherland here sooner than later. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. It's um, Mackenzie. So Jenny, thank you so much for being our special guest. Thank Thanks you, Suki. Yes. Uh, again, for one last time, uh, where can I find you in social media? Uh, Jenny, J E N N I E underscore Kwan K W A N, and that's on Instagram. And then I'm on TikTok too. I think it's Jenny Kwan official, and I'm on Facebook too. I think it's just Jenny Kwan. Who knows? <laughs> I see. Yes. Okay. Um. Oh, actually, my cousin just messaged me right now. So oh. she has one requ- last request. Yes. Can you sing the California Dreams still? Can I? Can I sing it? Yes, I can sing it. Yes. So it's it's more it's fun when people they come up to me. All of a sudden, they'll just start singing the song, and I'll be like, or if it's like me and like my friend Kelly, they definitely will sing it. And then if it's me, Kelly, and Michael, they'll just freak out. But yeah, people people usually come up to us and they sing it, <laughs> and yes. they're like, "What's happening?" <laughs> so, yeah. yes. so as a request could you sing it for us oh can i sing it yes yes oh hmm. let's see <clears throat> um all right i'm just gonna sing a, a, a tiny bit yes. don't wake me up don't oh see i messed it up all <laughs> uh, uh don't wake me up if i'm dreaming California dreams, just let me lay here in the sun until my dream is done. Do, 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 There you go. Amazing. <laughs> so for your 90s kids out there, got, you got your wish, especially you, Ate, my cousin, Charlotte. There you go. There <laughs> you question. go. Yes, from Samantha herself. So now you can now you can cross your check mark bucket list. <laughs> uh, but again, Jenny, thank you so much like for being our special guest, and can't wait to see you for future conventions or future yeah. events. Yeah, I mean it would be fun, and like hopefully one of these days the dreams can get together and maybe we'll perform a song or two at a con. You yes. never know. You never know. Yes, never know. All right, guys, this is Ryan from the Barty Show with my special go guest star Jenny Kwan. See you guys later. Yes, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys. Bye.